Hi, my name is Nicholas Joannou. I'm an astronomer from the Royal Astronomical Society and I'm here today at the Westminster Reference Library at the site of Sir Isaac Newton's former home and observatory to show you how to use our Maxitov Kelsegrian telescopes. Okay, to ensure that the mount is uh, perfectly level before you begin, there's an incorporated bubble level on the mount here. And uh, to adjust the tilt of the base, all you need to do is screw the leg left or right to adjust its height, thereby adjusting the tilt of the mount until you see the uh, bubble dead center of the circle of the marker here. Then you know the whole thing is nicely leveled before you begin. Okay, now that the uh, telescope is properly set up, and just a quick recap, before it's switched on, you want the base pointing due north, which you can use the compass for, and the mount and the telescope itself to be leveled with the mount with the marker here pointing at the zero on the scale. Once that's done, you're free to switch the telescope on. Now it's ready for use. All you need to do now is point it or aim it at the subject that you wish to view. Select the uh, eyepiece that you want to use and focus. Then you're ready to go. So first thing that you want to do is just take the lens cap off the telescope, exposing the optics so you can take a look through. Also on the other side you'll have a couple of uh, caps uh, to keep the dust off the eyepieces. These also you wish you would uh, want to remove. Now, um, if you wear eyeglasses, you'll want to keep these rubber eye guards down. If you do not, you'll want to flip them up like this, just so you can get the right distance away from the eyepiece when you're using it to uh, be able to see the image properly. Now, aiming the telescope is done using this red dot finder. It has three controls on it. First one is on the side here, which is a simple on or off. And the other two, you have one at the back here and one on the side. Now this will adjust the left and right movement and the one at the back will adjust the up and down movement. When you switch it on and you look through the reticule here, you'll see a red dot projected. Whatever that red dot is over, that's what the telescope's looking at. Now that the red dot finder is properly calibrated uh, to the telescope, we can start our observing session. Um, the way that we would begin is to, again, make sure that the red dot finder is switched on. Whatever the red dot that you see through the finder is uh, pointed at or over should now be in the eyepiece straight away. Now, the telescope comes with uh, two eyepieces on a rotating turret. All you need to do to select a different magnification is simply turn the turret so that one of the eyepieces is facing directly up. You'll notice there's a diagonal here and this is the light path. So whichever eyepiece is at the top here, that's the one that's in use. In this case, the small one, now the longer. Of the two, this longer, larger eyepiece here will give you less magnification, but a wider field of view. So say if I wanted to see the moon all in one go, that's the one I would want to use. Then if I spotted, say, a crater that I wanted to zoom in on or see in better detail, I would just rotate the turret. So I have the smaller eyepiece on the top here, which gives me a greater magnification. And now I can see in more detail and closer. Once you've selected uh, the eyepiece that you want to use and the telescope's pointing at the subject, you'll then need to focus uh, using this knob here and it's just a simple matter of turning it whilst looking through the eyepiece until you get a sharp image. If you turn it in one direction and you see the image getting larger and blurrier, that means you're turning it in the wrong direction and you want to turn it in the opposite, direc in, in the opposite direction to what you just have. Um, that's the focusing operation. Now, as stated before, I c you can move the telescope around any way you want, manually, 
or you can lock it off and use the directional pad here to move it around. On the directional pad itself, apart from the up, down, left and right controls, you will also see a couple of buttons here that say cruise and you will see five numbered buttons, uh, one, two, three, four and five. Now these dictate the speed of the telescope when you press the directional buttons. So if I have it on, say, number five like that, it goes fast. If I have it on number one, it goes so slowly that you can't actually perceive it moving at the moment. But if you're at the eyepiece and find centering or trying to follow a subject through the sky, you would definitely see it moving. Once you've actually acquired your subject, um, you would want the telescope to track it through the sky so you can spend more time enjoying it at the eyepiece and less time trying to follow it as it moves through the sky. Now, uh, the Telescope has already been set up for use in and around the London region and all you need to do, once you have your subject in the eyepiece and uh, you're happy with the way it looks, focus, so on and so forth, all you need then do is simultaneously press buttons 4 and 5, the ones that's marked cruise, together. You'll see the uh, pad light up red, just to tell you that uh, Inputted the, uh, inputted the command. Now the telescope will now automatically track through the sky the object that you've uh, selected uh, to view. And uh, that means you can uh, walk away, um, you know, make yourself a cup of tea, come back, and it should still be in the eyepiece. Or if there's multiple people using it, they can all swap around and you don't have to keep on finding the subject again and again for each person. Uh, the the amount of time and the accuracy of the tracking is totally dependent on how well you've set up the telescope beforehand. So um, the more accurately you uh, level the base, the more accurately you level the telescope before you begin, the more accurately you point it north before you begin, it will give you a greater um, amount of time at the eyepiece before you need to recenter the subject again. To change the batteries, should they die on you, all you need to do is just rotate the mount round so you're viewing the back of the uh, swing arm here. Here is the battery compartment. All you need to do is unscrew this knob here. Just take it out completely. Then if I pull down and away, the battery cover comes off exposing the battery case here. You simply lift the batteries out and replace. Make sure you get them in the correct orientation. It's all marked here where the positive and negative should be. You can reinsert the batteries, take the cover, goes on bottom first and it will just click back into place take the screw, reinsert, tighten it up and that's it, you're good to go now. Okay so let's say it's the end of the night now and you've finished the uh, uh, night's observing and you want to pack the telescope away. So first thing that you'd want to do is uh, make sure all of the covers are back on the telescope itself, fold down the rubber eyepiece guards and replace the covers so we don't get the eyepieces uh, dusty. Uh, a common thing to forget is the red dot finder. Make sure that's turned off so you don't run out the batteries for your next use and obviously make sure the telescope is turned off as well. Just a, a quick bit of uh, safety advice. When using the telescope in the daytime Never, ever, ever point it near or at the sun. This is a very dangerous practice. Um, it would certainly damage your eyes and will damage the telescope also, but it's your sight that we're worried about. So when using this in the daytime, please do not point it near or at the sun. This is not good practice.
So now that you know how to properly set up and use the telescope, uh, we hope you're going to get a lot of enjoyment from it, viewing the cosmos, uh, the moon and the stars. And uh, we really do hope uh, that you enjoy uh, the telescope that you've been provided.